are you doing? Uh, very well. Excellent. It's a lovely event. It's a lovely venue. Excellent. I'm glad you like it. So, speechless. Tell me, um, this is a, uh, it's a wonderful story with obviously centering around someone who is um, trying to deal with a stutter. Um, where did the inspiration for this story actually come from? Is this something that's pretty personal to you? Uh, no, for me, the, the, the sort of the really personal thing was for Swanage. I grew up um, very near Swanage, and it was actually the producer, um, Paddy O'Sullivan, who's in the audience here, it's the sort of head there. Um, <laughs> the, uh, he, he, uh, he grew up with a lot of speech impediment growing up, um, so that, that side was very much based on, on that. And I thought, I mean, obviously, when he, when he sent me the script, I thought, oh, that's a brilliant idea. And then, of course, just as we were finishing post production, a little film called The King's Speech came out, and we were. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. But you know what can you do? Um, but yes, no. So, so I thought it was a yeah, I thought it was a fantastic idea for a story. And, you know. Brilliant, and obviously located in Swanage. Now, um, it's a beautiful location. It's wonderful, lovely beaches and things. Was it um, was it relatively easy to film there? Did you need to get any uh, kind of permissions or anything? How how did that actually work out for you? Um, no, well, well, like I said, I because I, I, I grew up near there. Um, a lot of the the places where we shot, I kind of knew, you know, it would be, it would say in the script, Eddie is on a, whatever, on a bench, and I'd go, I know exactly the bench, you know, um, and so on and so forth, and, and again, you know, knowing people, we, we, actually I say that I didn't really pull any strings in the town, but were ridiculously nice about us filming there, and I think, I think we shot it on, on red, and I think, you know, the, if that's a big camera, and you know, I think they were quite excited about having a, you know, what, what, what was actually a bunch of ragtag indie filmmakers, what looked like a very professional film crew there, kind of thing. But no, it's the, uh, the quality you've actually managed to come up with is, is fantastic, and as you say, uh, from a bunch of ragtag indie <laughs> filmmakers. Now, um, in terms of working with smaller budgets, um, how do you think that that is actually changing, uh, or how is it now compared to maybe 10 years ago, and what you can actually achieve, in your opinion? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, it's, it's changing greatly. I think um, you can, um, well, we, uh, this is going to sound like a relatively shameless plug, but we have a... Uh, uh, oh, we like shameless plugs, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, early next year, I have a feature film coming out called oh. uh, Harsh Light Day. Um, it's been uh, distributed by Left Films, and it's, uh, it's a horror film. And we shot that on EX3s, which are, you know, uh, prosumer cameras, I guess, with, with uh, uh, depth field adapters and prime lenses and stuff. And, Shot the whole thing for, I don't think I'm allowed to say the budget, but a very, very, very small amount of money. Um, so, in that sense, it's changing hugely. However, I mean, what it doesn't change, I think, uh, as, 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 as your broadcaster there said, it doesn't change the ability to tell a story. And I think it makes you have to work that much harder to get your, your work seen because there are so many other people out there making films and just picking up like DSLRs which look beautiful, you know, you get some beautiful films out of DSLR, um, you know, and, and just going out there and making films, which is brilliant, but more, more is, is great, but it does mean you have to fight twice as hard to get your film to something like this or to get it seen or, you know, uh, so. And you, you mentioned you have to fight twice as hard. What have you actually been doing? What have you had to do, let's say, to get to the stage you're at now? I mean, this in itself has been fantastic and obviously your feature film, I'm sure, is going to look fantastic, but what have you had to go do to actually get to this stage? Uh, it basically be poor for a very long time, and still, I, it, it, you you have to put in all your all your time and all your effort into into doing these things, and, and you have to do whatever you can to make money on the side because nobody, especially now that as you say, technology's come along so much, nobody's going to come along. I don't think, and just sort of as a first time filmmaker, offer you you know a load of money unless you've proven yourself with a with a short or something like that off you a, a decent budget to make a film um, because you can do it for, for so much less money you know it's kind of the, the onus is, is more on the filmmakers now to go out there and make something um, even if you you know shoot it all in natural light and just do it with the DSLR or however you do it you know um, so does that really answer your question yeah absolutely yeah. yeah great so tell us again what's the name of the film and when is it out uh, the feature film is, is called The Harsh Light of Day. Um, it's www.harshlightofday.com if you want to have a look. Um, we've, got, it's got the, we've got the shamelessly big poster out in the front there. So sort of, uh, uh, just uh, yeah, take, take a look at that. But that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a perfect example. That's, we shot that on a very small amount of money and, and just, you know, kind of crewed up from after we left uni, you know, people we knew. And, and so, you know, yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. So, Oliver, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, you go Thanks back. for showing it. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.